reflecting on the expectations we had at the beginning of 2016 is a good way to prepare for our commitment to looking ahead into 2017. Any review we do has to take account of how some expectations were not met and therefore how some unanticipated realities are going to impact on us. For example, Donald Trump on the 20th of January becomes President of the United States, a surprise to many. Here in Devon, we will continue in 2017 watching to see how Brexit developments might affect us here. So there can be for us a cycle, reflecting on the past to help us prepare better for the future. It's a sensible administrative model for organising our stewardship and use of resources, and it can help us find ways of responding to some of those unanticipated realities. In 2016, I was fortunate in enjoying a period of study leave. It was largely spent walking my son's dog and reading about the patriarch Jacob in the book of Genesis. He's a character who fascinates me. God has a plan for him. He interpreted that as supplanting his elder twin by taking his birthright, and his mother interpreted it by helping Jacob to trick his father Isaac into giving him the blessing intended for the firstborn. And that resulted not in dignity or status, but actually in having to flee and run away. Twice then, God interrupted his life dramatically, first in a dream and later in a night of wrestling. He was given the name Israel, a name which in much of the Bible is used interchangeably with the name Jacob. I'd quite like to be locked in a church with Jacob. That's one of the things, for those of you familiar with it, is often on the back page of the Church Times, an interview where the interviewee is asked, if you were ever to be locked in a church with someone, who would you want it to be? Well, I'd like it to be Jacob, and I'd like to talk with him about the expectations and the unanticipated realities that formed his life. How would he reflect with me on his life? At a conference I attended recently, a participant talked about leading a group of young people on a pilgrimage, and she spoke about the reflection the youngsters were asked to do each day of their trip. They would put three questions to themselves. What have you learnt from someone else? What did you learn about yourself? How have you encountered God today? I think those are three very revealing questions for self-reflection. And my intention during 2017 is to use those as part of my pattern of daily prayerful reflection, as a way of preparing as well for all that comes to me the next day. Already I've wondered how will the answers I give on one day meet the expectations with which I began the day and how often will they reveal unanticipated realities that happened to me. I've already borrowed the questions, so if you like, you could use them too. God bless you.